Welcome back. My name is Jim, my name is Jim Caseman. And of course, in these 10-minute uh, sessions every morning or five mornings of the week, we're just trying, uh, what, our, what our goal is to get to know God intimately. And we've already said this many times, bears repetition, you have to examine the entire body of uh, scriptures, old and new blood covenant, in order to really understand God's ways, his thoughts, and get to know him intimately. And so then, we've started talking about a subject that's mentioned more in the Bible than any other subject from Genesis to Revelation, and that is the, uh, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood. And we've covered quite a bit of ground on that already since session 314. And so uh, we're still talking about the blood, the blood, the blood, all the way from Genesis. Now we finally got to the new blood covenant where Jesus is now fulfilling by his being brought into this world, born of the Virgin Mary, and, and he is now beginning to fulfill everything that was said about him in the old blood covenant. Now, we left off in the last session talking about the importance of once that we're born again and we become new creations in Christ Jesus, created in true righteousness and holiness, God's a holy con, a holy God, and we're to be in, in, in fellowship with him and dwell in the most holy place. But in order to do that, we have to be created holy. And Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 24 says, And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So we were created in, um, we were created holy so we could walk with a holy God and be led by the Spirit of God who is the Spirit of holiness. And so then when we're born again now and we take on the nature of God, we no longer as a human spirit love to practice sin to, to practice sin because that's our nature and that goes right along with our flesh which has sinful desires but now that we're born again we're we're created holy so we are holy sinless human spirits cleansed with the blood of jesus 24 7 to keep us holy and now but we're still clothed with the same sinful flesh that we were born with see we change but our flesh doesn't change our flesh is going to be in this way until it takes its last breaths, or if Jesus comes back for his church, it'll be changed into a glorified body. But until then, as long as we're in this physical dimension, our flesh is going to have sinful desires, and, and Satan's still the god of the world system, and of course the world is death, and so our flesh has a lot in common with, with the world. And so we as human spirits then, we're charged to take control of our flesh and make sure that it no longer practices these sinful desires. We saw this back here in Galatians 5, in verse 16. And you then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You, the human spirit. You need to be strong enough now that you don't allow the flesh to get its way. Because if it gets its way, it's going to want to do the sinful things. And so we need to take control of our flesh and so that we do not do the things uh, that the flesh wants us to do. Now, he also said, Paul said, that he mentioned this in other times. Now, this is really important, so it's mentioned more than once about the flesh. Now, if we come back here into verse 25, well, verse 24 again, that's so good. He says that you put on the new man which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying... See, that's a sinful desire, lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Now, we're so used to lying before we're believers. But now that we're born again, we're, we're created in true righteous holiness. We speak truth, not lies. Lies bring death. Truth brings life. So, now here again we do. Bring our flesh in control. If you're tempted to lie, don't do it. Speak truth. Be angry. Do not sin. Do not let be angry or when angry. Do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. See, if you give place, if you're if you're yielding to the sinful flesh, you're yielding to the devil. 
Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who has need. Let no corrupt words come out of your mouth like they used to, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you are sealed by the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil being put away from you with all malice, and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. See, take control of the flesh, get away of all those evil things and do the opposite, do what's good. And therefore be imitators of God as dear children. God's holy, let's imitate him. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolishness, talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For you, this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. So here again, we got the same thing. If you let your flesh have its way, it'll take you to hell. And in this passage, he's just comparing the good with the evil, the good with the evil, and we're to do the good and not the evil. And then in verse 6, let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. By not what is acceptable to the Lord. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whoever makes manifest is light. And therefore he says, says Awake you, O sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. And that we can walk in light and don't have to walk any longer in darkness. And then again, he comes right back to here in Romans and he does the same thing again. And let me just briefly look at this in Romans chapter 8, verse Romans 8, 8. Then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. See, if you live according to the flesh, you can't please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. I have been created in righteousness and holiness, so I'm alive. My body's dead because there's sin in it. It's dead in sin. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. But if you live according to the flesh, you will die. See, you'll die spiritually. And if you're dead spiritually, you go to hell when your body stops breathing. You will die. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Now, this is talking to Christians. Those who are born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. This is who he's talking to. Now, we were dead once. Then we got born again and we became alive unto God. But now, if you live according to the flesh as a Christian, now that you're born again, you will die. And according to Jude, <laughs> once you die the second death, that's it. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of holiness, the Spirit of God, there are these are the sons of God. Praise the Lord. And so then, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adaption by whom we cry out the Father. The Spirit himself bears witness to our spirit. We are his children. If we are children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So we as human spirits must be strong enough to bring our bodies in line with the word of God, make our bodies live a holy life. See, that's our job. Therefore, brethren, it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, there, brother, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present, you, the human spirit, present your bodies a living sacrifice, 
holy, acceptable upon to God, which is our reasonable service. You take charge of your body and make it live a holy life. And then you'll see heaven. <laughs> well, glory to God. Here we are at the end again. Be blessed in everything that you set your hands to do until we meet again the next time. Glory to God.